Well, hello, good moment. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I am she, the illustrious, fabulous, famous, maybe, who cares, Crystal Crawford. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're here today. And if you are listening in the future, I'm so glad you're here today. And this week's episode is called Having Your Reality, What Does It Take? Um, I am, you know how I am, I do these episodes in light, a lot of times in light of classes that I've got coming up. But so I did just create a class around this. It's a 14 day class that starts Wednesday. It'll be on my website. So if you're listening in the future, you can go to crystaljoycrawford.com slash store and participate at any time. But I was looking at what to talk about or or what we where we want to go next and it was interesting because i'm in the i'm I'm finishing up a series on 21 days of money flowing in like air and it was it was as if just this bit massive space had opened up and i'm like i get i don't i don't know where we are going next hi sandra hi katarina tell me where you're watching from if you're watching i know katarina's in australia sandra i can't remember (sighs) anyway So, so I, you know, when I, when I get to that, that place, I start sort of searching through everything and the the topic that kept popping into my world and it's like, didn't want to wait to be talked about, hi Maxine, was about having your reality and what does that take? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And this is going to be a serious ADD romp. I did not give myself notes. Um, there is 82 directions I want to go with this. Um, but you know, we're, as of the recording of this, hi Sabrina, hi Fabiola, hi Michael, we're heading into Christmas, right? We're heading into the holiday season. Um, Hanukkah, Christmas, doesn't matter. Way more stuff going on than at other times of the year. Hi Tanya. And so it, it pinged me going, wow, it's so interesting. We are all about to choose actively or to feel obligated to either resist spending time with a lot of people or feel like we have to spend time with a lot of people. And it's usually at those times where we tend to feel like we lose ourselves. So what does it take to actually have your reality no matter who the fuck is around? You know, no matter, hi Heather, no matter who the fuck is around, your mother, your partner, your dog, your friend, whatever, you know, your aunt Mabel who pinches your cheek and kisses you sloppily. Does any actually have an aunt like that or is that just in the movies I need to know um and 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 what came to my mind as I was looking at this topic was this, a short conversation that I had with a friend of mine about I think we were actually talking about money but somehow it came up about liking herself and I was like well I don't even remember the context now but I was like well do you like yourself she's like I really like myself when I'm alone we might have been talking about like trusting herself She's like, I really like me when I'm alone. And so I said, well, if it's only when you're alone, which by the way, it's a lot easier to like yourself when there's nobody else around. If it's only then, do you actually like yourself? Because if you're willing to let that go in the face of what you get aware of when you're around other people, is it really that strong in your world? And so again, what does it take to have that reality of liking yourself no matter what? Okay, so there's a few different facets to this. The first thing that I want to encourage you in is cultivating trust in you because that for me has been one of the biggest choices that I made to strengthen that has changed the most stuff, okay? Now, I realize that, you know, that's gonna, that, I'm talking, to, I'm inviting you to a process like right before Christmas, I understand that. So who cares? Just start it anyway. And the way that I did that was was a 30 day challenge that we did in the awareness challenge called Total Trust in You. And that's also on my website. I think it's 25 bucks. And for 25 bucks, you get the clearing, you get um, a PDF, you get a group that you can join to like, it's a self-guided thing. But that clearing 30 times a day for 30 days rendered me into this sort of immovable space of me. Of course it's movable, but I but I walked through a series of situations in my life where I just didn't doubt me. And they were some really intense things. Like I was we were going through a lot of um 
bumps relationally at the time. And I just, I know it's things were coming out of my mouth and I was like, what is actually, and, but I, I didn't, I didn't go to doubt and I didn't go to dislike of me and I didn't go trying to figure out what was wrong after, because I had strengthened that trust in me. So my question for you is, do you actually trust you? Yes or no? And everything that brings up or lets down, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Now, almost everybody I ask this to says no. It's like almost everybody that I talk to has this underlying belief, knowing, not when it air quotes, um, fact underlying everything that there's something innately wrong with them. And so when you have that judgment of you going on, every single thing outside of you is proof of your secret, hidden, covert point of view that you are just bad, evil, wrong. And just so you know, almost every humanoid on the planet has that point of view implanted into their world at some point. And so it just, it's just, you don't even question it, it's just a fact. And I was having a conversation with another person about this and you know, she was coming to me with something that one of her clients had said and this client, and she's like, oh my God, I just got this email and this woman like is saying I'm not showing up in the groups and I'm not present enough. And so this woman was like just abusing her. And I'm so grateful for just being a facilitator because I'm like, yeah, okay. And I was like, what was she? I said, so are you wrong? And the interesting thing about this woman is that she's, you know, constantly looking for and trying to get out of the, the poo, right, of all the shit that we're aware of and all the people stuff. I was like, so, okay, so she said all this stuff. So are you wrong? Or is this woman trying to create something? And, she, and I said, what is she attempting to create that you're not looking at? And she was like, holy shit, mind blown. She got this whole download of awareness that this woman wants to keep working with her, but she wants to keep working with her for free. And so she's, this other woman has decided that if she makes my friend wrong enough, that my friend will feel bad and will give her the rest of the program for free. Now, when you're willing to see everything, when you're willing to see that people don't abuse you because of you, they abuse you because they can, and you're the most convenient target, then you start to get that, hang on a second, you know, somebody's doing their thing at me, am I wrong? Or are they doing something? So what would it take, thing number two, to be willing to know exactly what the other person is doing and never go to the wrongness of you? And everything that doesn't allow that to show up at least 1%, could we destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all lane, shirts, boys and beyonds, hi, Lenny. Hi, hi, seven? Seven, I'm probably brutalizing your name. Feel free to correct me. <laughs> So again, another scenario where the moment somebody else did their thing at my friend, she gave up her reality of liking herself and feeling really confident. She's like, I was having a really good day until I got this email. So how many of you guys do that? Like I'm having a really good day until something happens, right? You get that text, your mom calls, you, your sister comes over, you walk into the grocery store, right? Anything, hi Mags. Anybody? Show of hearts, hands, comments. Of course, there's gonna be a lag. And I spent probably all of my life doing that until the last year or two, where I just made a different demand of myself. And to be fair, this little mini conversation I'm having, this 30 minutes that I'm speaking about this is the tip of a journey, of a choice to strengthen having your reality no matter what, okay? So I wanna acknowledge that I'm not talking about something that's gonna happen overnight for any of us. But what I want to do with this conversation is open more awareness about where you give it up. Hi, who? Julian. Julian? Julian. Mm. Hi. So where else do you give up having your reality? Do you have your reality with money? Yes or no? And if you're not having your reality with money, whose reality are you having? And who chose that, <laughs> right? And I wanna to add to that, that we choose everything that shows up in our life. It's just so much of it's unconscious, right? But we choose it. So it's like, whose reality with money are you living out? Are you living out your reality? 
Is your reality what you are exhibiting right now, what you are actualizing? Or are you actualizing and living your dad's reality, your mom's reality, your sisters, your aunts, your grandmothers, your, um, hi Fabiola, right? And so you can take that information that you get with that question and you can make yourself wrong or you can go, oh fuck, I'm doing that. Cool. Wow. Okay. So if I can live out somebody else's reality, I wonder what I could do as my reality that I haven't chosen. And everything that doesn't allow that times a godzillion, destroy and create it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, punk, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Who do, who do you primarily give up your reality for? Do you have a primary person you give it up for? It's like when this particular, so I, I have another friend. I have a lot of friends. <laughs> She's got this particular set of people that every time she runs into them, her reality goes out the window. And, in, and she does panic instead, okay? Now, it's not everybody. She doesn't do, I mean, she was doing panic, that was a pre pre predominant energy in her world. But it's with these particular two people that literally, you know, like if you are if you were carrying your reality like a tray, literally these two people shows up and she's just like, the tray's gone and she's lost. Like she abandons herself immediately. And I that used to occur for me, I used to do that with my mom. So literally my mom would call, and this is years ago now, but I've worked so much on that. But my mom would call and literally I was terror, anxiety. Like I, I became this reactive, like, you know, blob of unconsciousness. <laughs> I don't even have words. So, so for my friend, you know, sure, the tray goes up, she loses herself, she goes into panic and it's changing some, but it's still there. So. But that's a, that in that particular moment, that's a choice she's making with these particular people. And so one of the keys to starting to change this, because I see a lot of you having, it's Julia, like Julian Lennon. Okay, awesome. Nice to meet you. Um, there's a few keys to changing this, okay? And I do want to add that what I'm talking about is a process, so please be kind to yourself as much as you are willing to be kind to you. One of the keys to changing this in any area, it doesn't matter where you're doing it, and you can look at every area. Truth, am I having my reality with money? Yes or no. Truth, am I having my reality in my relationship? Yes or no. Truth, am I having my reality with my body? Yes or no. Truth, am I having my reality with my business? Yes or no. Now, that is a massive conversation, which is why we're gonna do a little bit more and do 14 days of lives. You're invited. But if you get no, let's say you get no to all of those. Let's say, nope, not having my reality in any area of my life. Hell, how does it get better than that? First question, how does it get better than that? You are willing to be aware that you're not having your reality. You're, willing, you're brave enough to acknowledge it. You're brave enough to ask the question. You're courageous enough to go, well, what the fuck is next? Okay, how does it get better than that? That is a huge thing. It doesn't feel huge and you might make yourself wrong. I'd invite you to skip that step. But okay, so then go, okay, so I'm not having my reality with money. What would it even take? What is my rea what is my financial reality that I've never considered? Great question. What is my financial reality that I've never considered? If I were having my reality in my relationship, what would that be like? Now, having your reality isn't dependent on anybody else. And this is why we have three, five, 20 year classes in access. <laughs> on specific topics like money, like relationships, like abuse, um, because the, oh, there's a lot of this conversation that requires way more of a deep dive because we do a lot of insanity. But so like in relationship, for example, having your reality is not dependent on your partner. He, she can do whatever the fuck they want and you can still have your reality, but you've got to look at what you want it to be. So I'll give an example. There was a period of time recently where I was doing a fuck ton of reaction. And I've talked about it on a bunch of my series. The challenge is to choose your reality with no point of view, but it feels lighter. Yeah. I think the challenge is, yeah, I mean, definitely to choose it and also to get that your reality changes all the time. And that what we're really looking at is what's going to really work for me here. So I had this epiphany, like in regards to everything, but also especially relationships, because like when you have a primary relationship, like they're in your life a lot, right? And there were years where I did 
relationships, some longer than others, that only worked for me about 30%, maybe, in, and then it would go down from there. But instead of really just acknowledging, hey, is this working for me? What can I be or do different? You know, is there enough, you know, is there, is there stuff here that can work or is this just, was this a fantasy from the beginning sort of thing? Instead of doing any of that, I just made difficulty in the relationship. I made the things that were occurring, I reacted and created problems. Now that's like pre-access. But I'll tell you, like even six months ago, I was doing that in this relationship. And here's what I started to look at with that. Because when I react instead of act, there's a difference. Reacting to things is different than taking action. Taking action is, hey, what can I do that's different here? Reacting is like, what the fuck? I can't believe you, blah, 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 right? So I was doing a lot of reacting. And, and what was occurring is I was spending a lot of my moments and a lot of my days pretty pissed off. Now, there, there was joy in that for me as well. I have to be honest. Like, there was some joy in that. I Probably more joy. There was joy in that. I felt powerful. I felt right. Um, you know, I was using all of that to make him wrong in ways. And then I would, then I would feel bad after. So we were in this, this little mini cycle there for about three months. And we'd have these conversations and I'd feel closer to him. And so there was, I, I got a lot of information about that. But talking about having your reality, what I started to look at and what started to change it for me was two things. Is this choice that I'm making every single day, multiple times a day, creating the reality, is this creating what I wanna have? Now that's a great question to ask yourself. This way that I'm being with this person, even though I feel right and justified and righteous and all that stuff that I really love, is it creating what I wanna have with this person? And it was so clear that it wasn't creating what I wanted to have with this person. But I had to ask myself that because I had to bring it to consciousness because I was doing a lot of reaction. And number two, this is my life. I'm like, this is the life that I'm living. I'm spending self, this is me talking to myself, you know, you're spending however many hours every single day pissed, irritated, frustrated, and then the rest of the hours trying to figure out why you're pissed and frustrated and what's actually happening. And you know, I was spending a lot of energy on this thing. And you know, it was at that point where most normal people would have looked at, well, it's the relationship that's the problem, you need to toss the relationship. And I. So I got to that point, I'm like, well, is it that? Because that's the normal thing to look at. And then I, thank God for questions, asked like, well, what will my life be like if I leave? And I was like, no, doesn't get greater. What will my life be like if I stay? That was also a no. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Don't stay, don't leave. So I was like, okay, so what will my life be like if I make a different choice? That was a yes. So I started to wonder. Well, what different choice could I make that would create more for all of us? Now that's me having my reality. This reality is, should I stay or should I go? You only have two choices in this reality ever. You're either succeeding with money or you're failing with money. It's not that you just created what you created with money. That's not, that can't be. This reality gives you two choices. Should I stay or should I go? Am I failing or am I succeeding? Did I make a mistake or did I not make a mistake, right? That's this reality. Your reality is different. Your reality has choice in it. How much choice? Depends on how much you're willing to have, how much you're willing to exercise that, how much you're willing to explore what choices you have that you haven't considered. Um, but your reality is different. The thing is, we're not shown how or taught to explore our reality. Explore what else could be possible that we haven't considered. So in that particular moment where I was like, everything I was choosing was coming to a head for me. I'm like, I know something needs to change. Do I stay or go? And it was like, no, to both of those. And I was like, oh, well, that's weird. Okay, then is there a choice I can make that would, that would create something greater? Yes. Hmm. So what could I be or do that's different here? I'm not even shitting you that in that moment, I made a choice to be a generative element in this family and in this relationship. And I cannot tell you how much happiness and peace and gratitude I got access to with that choice and how much greater we've gotten in the short time. 
post that choice. It was never the relationship that was the problem. It was never the way he functions or the, our dynamic. It was never that. It was me. So interestingly, once I made that different choice, everything got greater. Everything got easier. Everything got happier. He started, like, he is blooming into more of him. I've just never seen it like this before. He's such a gift. And that was something I kept seeing. It's like, my reality is not this angry, like, resistant, like, bitchy, cunty wife reality. It's not mine. But, you know, like, I tried using the tools and who does this belong? I, tried, I did a bunch of things and it would change some. But what I finally had to look at is like, what would I have to choose here? And that right there is you exercising your reality in real time. And so I'm now having heaven where I used to have hell. And heaven is my reality. So that's the thing to start to look at. It's like, is your reality the hell you've created for yourself maybe over here with money or with, with your partner or with your kids? Like, is that your reality? Or is that the reality you trapped yourself in for whatever the reasons, whenever you did that? And now what can you choose? Like if you were gonna ask a different question, maybe go, what can I be or do that's different? Just not trying to fix anything, not trying to change anything. Because, you know, if we use that example of what I was being in the relationship, um, I kept trying to change. It was, you know, like change my position in the seats and like stand on one leg and running these clearings. And I'm so glad I did because all the choices I made to run clearings and all that stuff contributed. But what finally changed it forever was the choice I made to be what worked for me to be. It doesn't work for me to live out somebody else's reality of pissy, irritated, controlling wife. That doesn't work for me. And I found out through doing it, but that doesn't, that's not life worth living for me. But I'm the only one that could look at that. Now here's the thing about these people situations. If you constantly like make what's occurring for you their fault, and then you disempower yourself. But if you look at everything that's showing up in your life, every dynamic that you have with every person, everything you've got going on with money, everything in your business as something you've chosen and you've created, then you empower yourself with more choice. Because if you can choose that in that moment, then you can choose something else if you wish to. Listen, consciousness includes all of you, so it doesn't matter if you do or not, but it might matter to you. It might make your life more fun so are you currently making, cho making choices in regards to people that are fun for you? Now this is, I mean, uh, you know, I have to say with that particular question that are fun for you, that one's a little bit like, well, I mean, sometimes being right and being mad is fun. Let's be honest, right? I gotta keep track of the time because I could talk about this for the next 14 days. <laughs> what does a reality beyond this reality mean? Ask. Ask the universe to show you, what is a reality beyond this reality for me, universe? I can tell you that a reality beyond this reality for me is like the embodiment of the 10 keys to total freedom. Like one of the things Brendan Watts said in the Choice of Possibilities class that I'm taking right now, and I knew this, but he put it into words. It was so good. He's like, in total allowance, there's no need for pot and pock. Like if you guys have ever read the book, The Place, by Gary Douglas. That book is the living, breathing possibility of what a reality is beyond this reality. That he, he uses a story, illustrates a reality beyond this reality. And it, there's an, in that reality, there's no need for clearing or you know any of this, nothing. There's no need, there's just how things work and you functioning in communion with everything and functioning with all of the elements. But we've been shown and learned how to function against the way everything is, right? In oneness, in molecular communion, 
everything just is. You look at a molecule, it responds. Doesn't need your words, doesn't need your pocket pun. That's working too hard. In the fizzy, what is the word? It's interesting trying to find words to describe this. In the physic reality, you know, if you look at quantum physics, molecules don't need us to work that hard. They respond, they respond. So it's just that we've created and bought into so much unconsciousness and so much anti-consciousness as, you know, the way we think, the way we're shown to live. And it's just everywhere. So we're psychic, we pick it all up, we buy it as real, everyone else around us is, it must be real. And we make ourselves wrong in response to what we've made right, which is this reality. And so, and nobody shows us how to go after and look for what's true for us. We don't even ask ourselves. We just assume that we should be making everybody else happy. And if they're not happy, then we must be wrong. To varying degrees, right? Depends on, to varying degrees, to whatever degree that's true for you. So, you know, the way out is the choice in every 10 seconds. Okay, shit, just gave myself up there, just bit off Aunt Mabel's head, right? Just bit it off. Cool. How does it get any better than that? What can I be or do that's different now? And if you guys want a really, really great, great conversation about this, what can I be or do different? Go read chapter one of The Gentleman's Club, also by Gary Douglas. Like It's an epic conversation on change and different. Because that's really the conversation that pulled me out of choosing cunt for three to four months pretty solid. And then feeling bad, and then trying to figure out why, and then pocket potting myself, and creating clearing loops, and talking about it on video. <laughs> like, I mean, thank God for all that, but right? Like, that was the conversation that went, what can I be or do different? And that right there was me having my reality. Because I'm not willing to live that long at the effect of anybody else's reality. And I always know when I'm in somebody else's reality because I'm not happy. I don't have peace. I'm doing disruption and reaction and feelings. That is not my reality. But that what you got to start to look at is, I mean, that was, I thought that was my reality for like years. And I started to get through using like, Hey, is this light for me or heavy for me? That very first tool. Is this light or heavy? Started to get, oh, that's heavy. Right. That means that's not, oh, that's not something I want to choose. So my reality is in the lightness direction. I mean, it started way back there with just looking at, hey, what's light for you is true for you. What's heavy is not true. Right? So I kept going down all these heavy things, heavy feelings, heavy reactions, heavy choices thinking that if it was heavy, it was more solid and more real. When in reality, my reality is so much space, so much ease, so much joy, it's so much space. And that's what you start to discover as you begin to use these very first access consciousness tools, which if you're new, go to Being You, Changing the World, and the 10 Keys to Total Freedom. And I have all these books, by the way, linked for you, so much ease at crystaljoycrawford.com and just go to the top bar and there's a pics. You can click on that and these all these books are there. But yeah, so I do realize that I told you this is going to be an ADD romp. So you're going to if you really want to like pick the tools out of here, go back and take some notes because starting to strengthen this is recognizing you do have things that work for you and things that don't. And it's just that simple. And you're not wrong for having that. And when you are willing to know that, then you can recognize when something's just not working for you. And you can go, well, if I were including me, if I were having my reality with this, what would I choose? Hey, Carrie. Okay, that's one of the first things just to get, like if I were having my reality here, what would I choose? If I were including myself here, what would I choose? Right, especially important as we're going into the holidays because there's so much stuff going on. Quick story, and then I will go. I know, I'm running over. I can already tell I'm going to talk. Yep, we're at the mark. But I'm going to tell you a quick story about this, and then we'll wrap up. So 
my partner's birthday. What a gift he is, by the way. Like my heart overflows. Like I'm so grateful. I feel so rich. And this is the richness that we miss out on when we are doing all the other shit that other people do instead of the choices we have available. We miss the richness. So, um, so today it's his birthday today, and um, he's wants to have his little d Luna, his daughter, come over and have cake with us. And we were just talking back and forth, and then he got an idea. He's like, "Hey, what if we invited, you know, her parents over?" And so we talked about that. And and the thing that I it, and it just had sort of a like, you know, interesting energy to it. And I was just we so I asked him some questions of like, you know, does this really work for you? Um, is this about you? Is this about her? You know, is it, would it be fun? But it got him to start to look at, go beyond like the dream and the fantasy that we all have of certain situations into, hey, what, what would really work, you know, for everybody? There was the what we wish was, and then there's the what is. And when we're willing to be with all of it with no point of view, and you get there through just, when you get there, when you get there, it's okay then you can get the information that actually includes you. Like, does this really work for me? Or, you know, am I trying to give something that somebody can't receive? Am I functioning from a fantasy of what I wish was? Um, is it really gonna work? And that's that vulnerability with yourself when you're included that gives you all the information and allows you to take care of you. And it has nothing to do with protection anymore. No safety, no boundaries required. It's just awareness. So if you would like more of that, there are so many different facets, as you can probably tell by this 30 minutes to this, that I would like to gift you if that's something you would like. And you can come play with us on the 14 days and it's just $75. And um, I, I'm grateful that it's gonna go through Christmas because I get that that's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of stuff come up. And how does it get better than that? How does it get better than having more of you for Christmas? So if you're watching this in the future, Ignore the Christmas comment. <laughs> um, but yeah, so how does it get any better than this? What would it take for us to take care of ourselves? What would it take for us to wonder what was really true for us in every moment? And what would it take for us to cultivate the strength of being that is us asking ourselves, and choosing for ourselves instead of against everybody else. And that's it for today. If you loved this, share it with a friend. And I'll see you on the series or I'll see you next week.